Okay, so here are the finished front and back panels. Well, at least I've made the holes in them. So this is the front panel. Um, I've managed to drill holes for the LEDs, uh, holes for the, this going to be on off switch reset button and that's where the USB stick will go in. And this is the back panel. So we've got the keyboard, got VGA and we've got uh, power in through a USB socket. So what I was able to do here, um, using only some very basic tools, I've got uh, my drill bits, the Titan, whatever you call one of these things, a hammer and a few needle files. I was able to uh, get these holes made, obviously round ones are a lot easier to make than square ones. Uh, for the, the My technique for the plain round ones was to centre punch first into this, this one millimetre aluminium sheet drill with my smallest drill bit and work my way up uh, one drill bit at a time until I get to the size that was appropriate for whatever hole I was making. I discovered I didn't have a big enough drill bit for these. These should have been 12 mil, I think. 12 millimeter holes, I only had 10. So I had to just file them, which is why they're not particularly good quality, but that will be covered by the switch, I think. So you won't see that. And for square ones, I drilled a series of holes and then filed it to shape as best as I could. And this absolute rat's nest is the Z80 Playground um, with the VGA32 and a little board here that I've uh, interfaced the two together. Um, so what I've done, all I've had to do here is bring each of the LEDs out. For example, here's one, I'm not even sure which one that is. What's that power? I think that's the power on LED. I brought out the LEDs by just taking out the normal LED and wiring them up. I've been painting the fence <laughs> and um, I couldn't find any heat shrink so I've just used a little bit of sellotape to stop that shorting out. So I brought out five LEDs, I've got a on off switch for the power, I've got a reset button floating around somewhere, there it is, reset, so I've got power and reset. Power comes in um, through a USB connector. Thanks to everybody who watched parts one and two of this series and gave me some hints and tips. And I took one piece of advice, which was to use the USB type B panel mounting connector to get the power in. So you plug what I, what I think of as a printer style USB connector in there to provide power. And then you've got the VGA32. So that's the VGA socket that's going to stick out the back. I've got an extension lead to get the keyboard from here to um, another panel mounting socket for the keyboard. Remember, it's a PS2 style old fashioned keyboard. What else is there? And then I've got an extension to get the uh, the USB stick uh, out to the front panel. So that's going to plug in here with a panel mounting USB socket for the USB stick to go into. Oh, yes. And on this uh, board here, I did try some other methods of interfacing 3.3 volts from here to 5 volts on here. Just connecting the 3 volt to the 5 volt directly was good enough for one direction and the other direction I tried using a resistance, uh, two resistors as a voltage divider. But in the end I went back to this one because I found it was a bit more stable. But I don't know, it, it could have been easier than that, but I've got plenty of these level converters. It's a 4 channel level converter, I've got plenty of those, so you know I might as well use what I've got. So let's get all these bits and pieces put into the case and see how it works. Nearly there now, I've got the, this is the back panel, I've got pretty much everything in place on that. Uh, I couldn't find the screws for the PS2 connector, but that's, that's just sort of sitting in there at the moment. Um, you can see I made an extension lead. The VGA32 is connected up and just, I took the bolts off and then was able to screw that back in. The power socket there is absolutely perfect, so that goes on the back. And at the front, the front panel, I'm quite pleased with this front panel actually, it's crying out for a big logo across the top and it obviously needs something, some sort of label so you can see what each thing is, but I've got the LEDs in these metal panel mounting bezels, which look very nice. I've got the world's cheapest sounding on off switch. Oh, that's bad. Uh, reset button and, well, we can plug that in right now actually, let's put that in there. USB is in there. Slightly wobbly piece of metal. I wish it was a tiny bit stronger than that. Anyway, too bad. So I put that in, fix that up, and we should be good to go.
and voila here we are with the finished product so let's turn the power on oh, yep there we go booted up the screens on let's just turn that around a bit and as you can see i've started up the z80 playground into its normal monitor menu so let's see if we can get these leds on i quite like these leds across here the whole thing is definitely it needs uh, labels under each one but we've got the power on halt that's the rom roms enabled that one's the user led that one's the disc light so let's toggle on the disc one that's the disc one on uh user one you can put that on and the halt one well, we need to press hash for that there we go we halted it so that's all the lights on uh, i need to reset and we can get into cpm here we go uh, and let's have a little game of chess uh, uh black and white well we'll have white look ahead oh three nice e2 to e4 uh yeah fairly standard opening 